Hi, I'm Phoebe and welcome to the first video tutorial for biology's first module, Maintaining a Balance. Topic 1 is the agenda today. Most organisms are active in a limited temperature range. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify the role of enzymes in metabolism, describe their chemical composition, and finally, describe their specificity on substrates using a simple model. Intimidated yet? Don't be. This stuff is quite easy to grasp. Most of it, anyway. Let's get straight into it. Identifying the role of enzymes in metabolism. To understand enzymes, we need to start with the metabolism part first. Metabolism is basically a set of biochemical reactions that take place in a cell in order for it to keep living. This is essentially what happens in our bodies 24-7 and is incredibly important. Without our metabolism, our bodies can't break down food for energy, life wouldn't exist, and you wouldn't be listening to this right now. If you want a more wordy explanation, refer to the slide. To break this down even further, metabolism can be split into two components, catabolism and anabolism. Catabolism is where you break down organic matter or food into energy for the body. Using the energy produced, anabolism builds important cells like proteins and nucleic acids for the body. Needless to say, metabolism is an extremely important process for our bodies to keep functioning like a well-oiled machine. The catch with our metabolism is that it is actually incredibly slow, regardless of what all skinny people say. In order for a cell to function properly, the speed at which our metabolism operates at must be carefully maintained. This is where the role of enzymes come in. Enzymes help speed up our metabolism and are known as biological catalysts. The important thing to know about catalysts is that they basically lower the energy required to start a reaction and they speed up the rate of reaction. They're like steroids but without all the bad stuff. Let's have a look at two reaction pathways, one with an enzyme and one without an enzyme. Firstly, the reaction pathway without an enzyme. As you can see in this graph, the reaction forms a product by following this reaction pathway demonstrated here. This hill part of the graph is the activation energy or the minimal amount of energy needed for a reactant to turn into a product. As you can see here, the activation energy needed without a catalyst is quite large. Without an enzyme, this means that a lot of energy is needed to break food down into useful energy. We obviously don't want this type of inefficiency. So let's now look at the reaction pathway with an enzyme. At first glance, you can already see that this reaction pathway is different. With the addition of an enzyme, the hill part of the graph is lower meaning that the activation energy is lower. This means that less energy is needed to turn a reactant into a product and a lot less energy is needed to break food down into useful energy. If we directly compare both reaction pathways, we can visually see that the activation energy required for a reaction is lower when an enzyme is used. To sum it up so far, enzymes are biological catalysts they lower the energy needed to start a chemical reaction in a cell, they help the body use less energy in transforming food into energy, and you shouldn't listen to anyone who brags about their incredibly fast metabolism. Let's look at a general example. One reaction that occurs in our bodies is aerobic cellular respiration. If you don't know what this is, don't worry. All you need to know is that glucose plus oxygen equals carbon dioxide water and energy. Looking at the slides, the yellow hump represents the activation energy needed without the catalyst, while the blue hump represents the activation energy needed with a catalyst. As you can see, the reaction is far more efficient when a catalyst is used. That's the main idea about enzymes in metabolism. Before we finish this part off, one important aspect you should know about enzymes is that they are very specific. Here is a representation and an example of three different types of enzymes. Ignoring the fact that they look more like a misshaped blob than an enzyme, the important thing to note here is that for every chemical reaction you have, a specific enzyme catalyst is used to speed up said reaction. 
Even though specific enzymes are used, they remain unchanged at the end of a chemical reaction. This means that they can be reused and that a small number of enzymes can catalyze a large number of reactions. So yeah, enzymes are handy little things that keep the body running smoothly. Keeping up so far? If yes, good. If not, rewind and listen to this as many times as you can stomach before we move on to the next dot point, describing the chemical composition of enzymes. To start this part off, you need to know that enzymes are proteins. Proteins are large molecules that have important roles in the body. And proteins in this context doesn't refer to steak or the stuff bodybuilders drink. Enzymes are more specifically known as functional proteins, meaning that they carry out specific functions. In an enzyme's case, that's speeding up chemical reactions. Moving back onto the chemical composition of proteins, proteins are made up of polypeptides, which in turn are made up of amino acids that are joined and bonded together like some weird form of Lego. Polypeptides can be made up of millions of amino acids joined together, but they're useless as an enzyme until the polypeptide can fold up on itself to create a gap. This folding allows a polypeptide to form a 3D structure and the resulting gap is known as the active site, which is a place where the chemical reaction can take place. If you want a more scientific term than gap or active site for essays, it is also known as the site of catalytic action. To sum it up so far, an enzyme is essentially a protein made up of polypeptides, which are formed from many amino acids bonded together via peptide bonds. As for amino acids, they're made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, or chon, just to make things easier. And just like that, we are done with the chemical composition of enzymes. Don't worry, nearly there. We're on to the last and final part of this dot point, describing an enzyme's specificity on substrates. To best explain an enzyme's specificity on substrates, we'll use a simple model. Now, here's that familiar blob model of an enzyme. As we said before, enzymes are fussy and will only react to specific substrates. Here's a substrate, which is just the term to describe the reactants or chemical species before a reaction. If you've been following everything so far, you may recall that when a polypeptide folds upon itself, a gap or active site is formed. This gap is where the substrate fits before a reaction occurs. Think of it like a key in a lock. The enzyme is the lock and it will only react when the right substrate or key is used. Use the wrong key, the lock won't open and the enzyme won't catalyze the reaction. This model that we're looking at is fittingly known as the lock and key model and it is probably the easiest way to remember all of the stuff about enzymes and their specificity on substrates. All you need to remember is that the substrate represents the key, the enzyme is the lock, and the enzyme won't catalyze the reaction until the right key is used. So, there you have it everyone. That's all you need to know for the first dot point in biology. Just to make sure no one has forgotten everything that's been discussed so far, here are the three main concepts we learned from this video. Firstly, enzymes are biological catalysts. They speed up chemical reactions by reducing the activation energy needed to transform a reactant into a product. Secondly, enzymes are proteins and are made up of polypeptides and amino acids and their respective elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, or CHON. And thirdly, the lock and key model is used to describe an enzyme's specificity on substrates. Think of the enzyme as the lock and the substrate as the key. In order for the enzyme to open or speed up a reaction, the right key or substrate is required. And we're done. You finished the first dot point. Admittedly, it's not quite on the scale of winning Wimbledon or landing on the moon, but it's an achievement nonetheless. Coming up in the next video, we will have a look at how pH affects enzymes.